song I wrote, you might want to sing it note for note, don't worry, be happy, don't worry, be happy, worry, worry, don't be happy, worry, worry, don't, don't, don't be happy. Morning, folks. I think one of the most interesting and important conversations recently has become about how computers and automation are changing the very nature of work. And I'm sure that many of us, at the beginning of this new year, are thinking about the future and our careers and our work and what we need to be successful. And then asking the question, is that song correct? Should we be worried? Is this something really to worry about? Or is all this talk of disruption and automation just another hype and sensation and another crisis that we'll, we'll get over and perhaps we can actually just be a little bit happy? Well, the conversation all started in 2013 with two Oxford University professors who wrote a piece of work that said, by 2025, 47% of the jobs in the US could vanish. The OECD then said, no, but slightly differently, only 9% of jobs globally will go away, but 20%, 26% will be changed dramatically. Forrester says, no, no, actually digitalization will create 7% new jobs, but it will destroy 16% of the old ones, so a net 9% effect. McKinsey says 30% of um, tasks will fall away, but only 5% of professions. And I'm sure you're as confused as I am, which has led the economist to ask, so what is the future of work and are we ready? And what we can see from all of this is that there's no consensus on the exact number and timing of the disruption of work, but there is absolute consensus on the fact that work is going to change fundamentally. So let's think about the future by starting looking at the past. And the point is, when we look at the past, we see we've been through many disruptions, from being hunter-gatherers to being farmers, from knowledge work being elitist to knowledge work being almost universal, from work being physical to work being electrically powered or steam powered, from individual work to production lines. And we've seen that um, we've gone from humans being the computational machine to computers being the computational machine. But what's interesting through all of this actually is the amount of human work has increased, especially during the last 50 years of the computer age. So people said electricity would do away with work. It didn't. They said steam power would destroy jobs. It didn't. They said computers would reduce the amount of work. It hasn't. So is it different this time? And I think what is different this time is the rate of change. Human beings are incredibly adaptable, amazingly resilient creatures but we do take a generation or two to adapt and respond. And the current waves of change are breaking over us at seven and five and three year intervals that we don't have time to adapt and respond and come up for air before the next wave crashes over us. So let's talk a little bit about the future of work. For the next decade or two yet, there will still be a good opportunities for those of a few humans at the top of the pile. Those people in creative roles, in true leadership positions, doing complex design and cognitive work in, with personal brands and celebrity will sit comfortably at the top of the pile of the future of work. But the vast majority of what we now call knowledge work will be done by computers. Not primarily because they are cheaper, but because they are faster, they're not emotional, they make fewer mistakes, and they scale quicker but there will still be a significant layer of work for humans in three core competencies. Those are what I would call creative intelligence, relational intelligence, and um, unstructured dexterity. And people with careers in rich in those attributes will still have a rich opportunity in, in the future. But the huge amount of traditional manual or routine knowledge work will be performed by machines. And the, mo and the majority of people in routine and manual work will be displaced into lesser skilled, lower paying work, or in fact, no work at all. So depending on our skills and our ability to adapt as adaptable or resilient human beings, we can either be a little bit happy about this future of work, or we can be somewhat worried, or even very worried. 
Which brings us to the question, how do we respond to this? As individuals, what do we need to do to prepare for this changing world of work? And as organizations, what do we need to do to prepare our people to ensure that this is more opportunity than threat, to ensure that we have the right socially responsible and ethical response? These are critical conversations, and I would love to be part of them with your organizations. Because depending on our response, we don't have to be worried. If we are equipped and alert and prepared for this turbulent ride into this disruptive world of the future of work, perhaps we can afford to be even just a little bit happy. Thank you very much.